me what information is it immediately makes me think if I want to if everything as I had it turned the other way was information as it's presented my natural instinct is to turn everything over and examine it from underneath or sideways or back to front or upside down that's how I would get to the truth I don't just accept information as it's given to me so if this is me my idea this little flowering of an idea, this bloom of an idea is to question everything. Hence I turn everything upside down. Even if it was built up as something and passed off as information, I have to ask, according to who? Where did the source come from? Who benefits? And why am I being given that structure of information? I would then do this. I would completely take it apart to examine it. What are those two signs on those two yellow bricks over there? Uh, I think the common perception would be that these were eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, just my, my building ability is so lacking that I, I wouldn't know how to... I mean, perhaps he can... I doubt they can hold on to them. It'd be good if he could hold on to the little eyes. Yeah. Well, it depends who this person is. Yeah. And one would assume that if he's standing on the eyes, is it suppressing eyeballs, controlling eyeballs? One might say that this is Reuters, for instance, controlling information, the eyeballs, or it could be any kind of network. Standing, although he's smiling, what kind of smile is that? I mean, is that a... That's, a that's not a very nice smile, that's a kind of like a pernicious gaze, isn't it? It's like, yeah, I own these eyeballs, I will tell you what to see, in which case, you know, the construct of information I would then turn over and build something and put this person at the top, complete with antennae, okay. yeah, and then they would be transmitting to those eyeballs, which are at the bottom of their feet. But actually all the information that he works on is all detached. Uh, I mean, that's why, why all, all these bricks are detached, there are no touching bricks. So what's information? Yeah, what is but that was me, like I was saying, deconstructing information, or deconstructing what I'm told. If you were to say, what is information according to me, and what is information that I would build? Build it. Oh, damn, I was trying to avoid it. <laughs> you can't avoid it. Damn. Well, I think, uh, you know, self-doubt, which I'm sure is common for all artists, you know. Uh, I think, well, no, I really admire some people can do things and they just need to express or they want to paint or want to do something and, and they can just start emoting or expressing immediately without any fear whatsoever. Uh, and sometimes I can do that when I'm writing and I have an idea in my head and I'll just start writing very freely, very quickly, just pages and pages. Uh, but if it's something like film, uh, there's a lot of fear involved because uh, you can't just do something for the sake of it. Uh, kind of fills me with dread and excitement at the same time. So then I think it's a good question because then I would just start fearlessly putting things on because in fact I would just, without even thinking about it, I would just start adding things and putting them on because life is fragmented. All humans are fragmented and made up of many parts and completely imperfect and flawed. So now I have no fear whatsoever about just putting things together. And I won't be pretty and I don't care about it looking good at all. Because this is humanity itself. Flawed and imperfect. And so many different discourses make up who we are. And it's very fluid. So I'll just keep putting things in without thinking. This is life itself. Sometimes attractive, sometimes appealing, fascinating, nonsensical. You know, the life is on the top of the black yeah. sound base. Yeah, well, one would hope you had a good solid foundation.
but then what's a solid foundation for some may not be for others and that brings me to talk about fate because you know I often think in New Zealand that we were very blessed and why was I born as a white man educated in New Zealand and the next soul is born in a in Chad it makes no sense I don't know but this maybe this is a sense of gratitude from me even though it's dark having this one solid foundation as shaky as it is and as complex and flawed and marked with massive failure my life uh, <laughs> I mean, that just sounds self-pitying but my, uh, my life is yeah you know filled with it's fractured and flawed but I don't shy away from that that's okay so let's go back to makes for good stories <laughs> that's good that's inspiration yeah this entire thing is information every little part of it and every little part of me and everything I've ever known and everything you've asked me and every person in the room and everything that's going on outside and ever was contributes to this being a little bit of information that information might be complete bullshit but it is information all of it taking this logo or just build one I mean this is information life apartment Propaganda. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> we got that. On. And you want to build a new model or you want to play with that one? I mean, I give you so much freedom. Propaganda. Propaganda. Uh, is this propaganda? Can this be propaganda? But uh, are you talking about propaganda as a construct or propaganda the film? You tell me. Mm. I want to see if we can find out new the best propaganda is this that you can't see it those who construct propaganda hope this is what you see you don't see anything my goal is this that you see it and you ask who is it who's making it who is it who's selling this to you or telling you something or trying to influence you and then piece by piece you start taking it apart looking at it asking questions talking to each other why am I being told this who benefits and sometimes it's not easy to take apart and you use the word propaganda not public relations not international diplomacy or advertising or marketing propaganda because it's one construct you know and so you take it apart taking apart what you're sold information is the key to is the antidote to propaganda you take everything apart and start asking questions about it that's the antidote that's how you undo propaganda. Some propaganda is good, so you would leave it be. For example, a propaganda campaign in Africa to try and get people to start using, you know, contraception to avoid getting AIDS, that would be a good thing, you know. But we take it apart and we examine it. Why am I being told these things? Why am I being sold this? Who benefits? So this is what I do with information. I take it apart and I examine it and I look at it really closely. Up close, upside down, back to front and inside out. And then talk to people about it as well. Did you hear this thing yesterday? Why do you think that was said? Haven't we heard this before? Who's benefiting from this? What do I get out of this? Why am I the one being sent to fight these wars? And for who? It's the same thing over and over again. So information take it apart and I think that's true for everything I think even for entertainment if you're enjoying something still discuss it and talk about it don't just let it happen don't just let it slide don't be lazy take the time to think about it you know and not always in a negative way or not always assuming that something's bad but you know 
discuss things because human beings are very, very clever, wonderful creatures and I think that we're living in an age where we're so horribly distracted and our attention spans are so small and it's very easy to get distressed about, you know, that maybe we're becoming not so smart or underutilizing our brain power or our ability to analyze things and deconstruct things and but we're not, we're smart and we should challenge ourselves and each other to you know take things apart and look more closely. This construct of if assuming that this is information or propaganda, this represents those who construct propaganda, international diplomacy, information, public relations, PR, marketing, it represents what they want you to see and what they don't want you to see. What they don't want you to see is how this is constructed or put together. Not just the parts, but how it's constructed. And they don't want you to see. If this is the word propaganda for a start, they don't want you ever even thinking about that word because it has negative connotations. This even represents the language they want you to use. Because there's no there's really no negative connotations with, you know, advertising or marketing or international diplomacy. These are nice words, you know. So even language is dangerous. Language alone, just that one simple thing, enables those who want to influence you or guide you or control you to keep you from thinking the information is bad. This is actually what it is. So how do you take away? How do I take this away? Yep. Of course, metaphorically. Two things. One is question everything. Everything you read, see or hear. And it's a simple thing. And everyone's capable of doing it. Sometimes you do it without thinking and all it takes is for a friend or someone in your family or your class to just say what do you think of? Uh, like for instance, a couple of weeks ago uh, our Foreign Minister of New Zealand appeared next to the US Secretary of State, John Kerry, announcing that we'd just withdrawn from Afghanistan. And we're always fighting wars for America, they have nothing to do with us. And he announced, uh, we're giving peacekeepers, peacekeepers, it's just bullshit, soldiers, uh, to America's war in the Middle East. Thinking, what war in the Middle East? This is called softening, you know? There's no such thing. You're just being prepared in general that there's a war in the Middle East. Well, there's a lot of conflicts in the Middle East, but there's a war in the Middle East. It's got a name now. This is softening, and most people just change the channel or don't even think about it. But if you were to see something like that, you should turn to the person next to you, or the next day at work, and say, what war in the Middle East? What does peacekeepers mean? It's a propaganda phrase. All of it, it's everywhere. It's just invisible and we stop thinking about it. We just don't notice. You have to start noticing. You have to start asking questions. Humans are very good at this. And we've stopped doing it. And call it propaganda. Because New Zealand now faces a situation, and I'm dealing with this in my next film, face a very unique situation, and everyone in the world does. We always have traditional allies. And it's the same for humans as well, you know. You've had friends you've had forever. But what happens? Life changes. Everything changes. So now our new best friends are China, because now we're part of Asia. And we have the first, we're the first in the world to get a free trade agreement. We depend on China now for our economic well-being. So we have to be very nice to China. But our old friends America are saying, yeah, we just, you better remember who your friends are. And, and now we face a real, real problem. Well, who's our friend? And what are we going to do? Because both of our friends are enemies, so to speak. Everything changes. And so everyone needs to ask some pretty big questions. And that's what I want to do in this new film. What are we going to do? Who's our friends? You know? And what does that mean? And what are the implications? What, are you, what even is a friend in politics? You know? There's copious amounts of bullshit that people are completely avoiding because it's too much. You know? It's much easier to keep on watching cat videos on YouTube and it, and it makes me despair. And I don't know what to do about it. You know? But I, I have a lot of faith that 
human beings, even ones with bad looks on their faces, are wonderful creatures that are worth saving and are capable of really, really wonderful things and coming together. And, and we've done it in the past, stood up together and, and fought back. God knows we need to do it now more than ever because there's more at stake. Excuse my... Uh, and then there wasn't much building going on, just, just movement, uh, movement and hiding. And perhaps subconsciously that's me hiding from the fact that I can't, I can't build Lego very well. Thank you very much. Oh, you're very welcome.